Hi everyone, in this video, well, this will be a series of videos, I'm going to work through how to solve a weak acid strong base titration. These are extremely important for the AP Chemistry test um, and can be really confusing for students. So first, you might be giving a, given a problem like this. A student titrates 30 milliliters of, that would be acetic acid, with 0.1 m NaOH. It takes 23.55 milliliters of NaOH to reach the equivalence point. And then you're given the Ka value. So before I even dive into solving this problem, I just want to talk about the basics of a weak acid strong base titration. So when you have a type, this type of titration, this is what the curve looks like. Now this curve does not match this problem, um, but let's just look at this curve. A few things, I know it's a weak acid strong base titration because of the shape of this curve. The weak acid strong base titrations will look like this, where it'll start to go up and they flatten out, versus a strong acid strong base will look like this, where you see it just goes up. The second thing that told me that this was a weak acid strong base titration is the equivalence point. The equivalence point happens halfway up this uh, vertical slope. And so, and this isn't the best graph, so I'm guesstimating, but halfway up it is about right there. And so, choo -choo 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 -choo. when I look at that, the equivalence point is not at a pH of 7. The equivalence point is at like a pH of a little above 8. Um, which is true for weak acid strong base titrations. So a strong acid strong base titration, the equivalence pH will be 7. Uh, quiv, uh, uh, hold on, I just lost my mind. Equivalence point, sorry. For a strong acid strong base is 7. If it's a weak acid strong base, it's going to be greater than 7. It might be 8, it might be 9. If it is a strong acid weak base titration, it's going to be less than seven. It might be six. It could even be five. Um, and you should know this about these three types of titrations, what their pH is at the equivalence point. So that's the first thing that is really important about these graphs. The next thing that is really important, it's called the midpoint. The midpoint or the half equivalence point, you can call it whatever you want. You'll see it both ways because at the midpoint, which is halfway to the equivalence point. So on this graph, halfway to 50 would be 25. So right here, at that midpoint, your pH equals the pKa of your weak acid, which if you don't know, pKa is just the negative log of the acid's Ka. So right here, pH is pKa. Before the midpoint, so from 24 milliliters and lower, pH is less than pKa. After the midpoint, the pH is greater than the pKa of the acid. And in this part of the curve on a weak acid strong base titration, it is a buffer. This is a buffer solution. If you aren't familiar with what a buffer is, I have a video that talks about buffers, um, but buffer is when you have a weak acid and its conjugate base, which is present right here. Um, so there's just a little bit about reading these graphs. A lot of important things, that midpoint is super important when solving these problems. So let's look at this question again, what I was given. Um, a student titrates 30 milliliters of acetic acid with 0.1 m NaOH. It takes 23.55 milliliters of the NaOH to reach the equivalence point. And then we're given the Ka of this acid. The first thing I want to do is write the equation. So acetic acid plus sodium hydroxide. That is going to make water. H goes with OH. And then it's going to make sodium acetate. And A goes with the acetate ion. Now you should know that anything that has sodium is aqueous. So that's aqueous. This is aqueous because it's a strong base. And so what does it mean that it's aqueous? It means that those ions are separate. 
So this is really what sodium acetate looks like in solution. Water is not aqueous, water is water. Sodium hydroxide, my strong base, strong bases fully dissociate in water. And so let me move that. What that looks like is it is just sodium ions and hydroxide ions. This acetic acid, you might call it aqueous in the uh, equation, but you should know that that is a weak acid. And by definition, what is a weak acid? A weak acid is something that will partially dissociate. So you might have some hydrogen ions, and by might you will, and some acetate ions, but we also have some that are not dissociated. Um, and actually you have more that are not dissociated than are dissociated with a weak acid. So we'll have a bunch of these and a few dissociated. And so these can be kind of complicated um, for a lot of reasons. You might further be asked to write the net ionic equation. If I'm gonna write that net ionic equation, you get rid of things that are ions on both sides. And the only thing that is actually aqueous on both sides, fully aqueous, would be the sodium ion. So this net ionic equation would be OO plus OH this. And so again, I have my weak acid, I have my strong base, and I make water, and then I make this. Whenever you have a weak acid, it's an acid on one side, the other side is the conjugate base. And you should know that about weak acids. Weak acids form conjugate bases. A weak base would form a conjugate acid. And because you form a conjugate base, uh, so once you're at, again, what's equivalence point again? Equivalence point is when moles of this equal moles of this. So at that equivalence point, you have water and you have conjugate base. But the conjugate base acts as a base. And what do bases do? Bases increase pH. That's why the pH for this is above seven at equivalence, because you make a conjugate base. If this was a strong acid, weak base titration, the weak base wouldn't make a conjugate base, it would make a conjugate acid, and acids lower pH. That's why the pH for those titrations are less than seven at the equivalence point. Um, and again, you should know that, and that's because of the weak things. Strong things don't make conjugate acids or, acids or conjugate bases. They might be called neutral salts. You might have heard that before because they don't form a conjugate acid or a conjugate base. But weak things will. Okay. So this video was just to introduce you to this type of titration. Um, and give you the basics. The next videos will go through how do you actually find the pH of these reactions. I hope this was helpful.